Want to win this bike? Well, you can. We're going to announce the winner July 1st. We're not going to do a live because of some technical difficulties, but we're going to draw a winner and we're going to post a video July 1st announcing the winner of this bike. There's a link below. You can put your name in and we're going to go back through the list and all the videos where people put hashtag build it right, hashtag build it custom. So get your name on the list. Link below. We'll see you July 1st. Announce the winner of this bike. Hey, motorized bicycle family. This is Tony here. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to teach you how to weld. Now, welding is really important for fabrication because you might need to make repairs. You'll want to modify parts and you need to know how to stick them together, right? Like that's super important. Like a few videos back, we modified one of these gas tanks. So I have another one and we're going to work on it today. But I'll also show you how to weld thinner metals, things like that, and give you a really good jump start into how to do it. That way you could go out, get you a good welder and start your own projects. Now you should reach out in the Facebook group because we can help and walk you through it. You know, so shoot a video of what you're doing. And if you run into any troubles or you just found something that worked really well, share it with us. And we want to uh, help you when you need the help. So before we get started, you're gonna need a helmet, some gloves, some good wire cutters and a good welding like tool. Uh, sometimes a pipe cutter, most definitely a wire brush and a leather jacket. Now, as far as a welder goes, I have, that's a wire feed welder with flux core wire. This one is how much heat you're giving it. So how much heat you're giving it, this one's how fast your wire speed is. Now on this one, you can even see that if you know the gauges of the middle, you just turn the dial to that right and then you learn where your wire speed is but if you look in here uh, they have materials whatever kind of wire size you're using right and then it gives you settings all across here wire speed and heat okay so our recommendation is is go to your local farm store and find a nice welder there and buy that one usually you'll be able to find all of the consumables which is the tips the nozzles all of these parts that you'll end up wearing out so that little tip in there that's a lot better and you know ordering something online waiting for it to come and then when you're in the middle of welding something and a tip you end up burning up a tip or something like that you can just go get one versus ordering one and waiting so i do all of my welding uh shopping local you should too so let's talk a second about flux core wire. So this has all of the things in it, the flux and the wire that'll melt the steel, instead of using like a copper wire with a gas like argon or something, okay? So it's really good as it says here, it's really good for uh, windy or outdoor applications. So I have a breeze going through here, we'll be good. Now I'm using 035 wire Okay, and then if you look here, this metal's like, that I'm gonna start with is like around a 14 gauge, and we'll do, that says five and 30, right? So, five is the heat, 30 is the wire speed. So we'll start kind of in between, because a little too fast, sometimes spit, 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 we'll adjust it accordingly. So my recommendation is, is to find some plate steel that's about the equivalent of what most bicycle tubes are. That's going to be, you know, 14, 16 gauge around there. And you're going to tack it together. Uh, this is what I was teaching some else how to weld. So this one's already stuck together. And of course it was rusty, but I wire brushed out the crevice. And it's a good way for you to start learning how to weld a bead. Of course, to weld, you gotta have a grounding clamp on so it completes the electrical cycle. Then we'll start welding.
Yeah, see, this is why you test because my other helmet over there, <laughs> the battery was dying in it and it was flashing me, so I couldn't see very well here. So I switched to this helmet and I was able to weld a lot better here. So I welded from here to here, then I stopped, so you can see that stopping point, and then here to here. But overall, that's a pretty good weld. It doesn't look the best, but that's why you practice, is you keep practicing on this kind of these kind of materials, and then you'll get it better and better, and you'll do a better job. Um, if you look at the overall angle, there's not a lot of what they call undercut, meaning it's dishing into each piece of metal. It pretty much is a 45 degree. Uh, that's perfect. I mean, yeah. So I do this a few more times. I'll get better and better at it, just like you will. And then you'll be able to weld on your part. So let's use the chalkboard so that I can explain the pattern of movement as you're welding. Uh, at one point in my career, I ran a robotic welder and I thought the way that it weaved a weld up and down was really interesting. A lot of times you can move along and you're kind of like circling the pool. This actually wove up and down. I really like that. So let's talk about that. So let's say this is your uh, seam that you're welding, okay? And you want your weld to go down the seam like that, right? So what would happen is, is if this is your piece and you're welding your seam here, right? What would happen is you start your weld and you let it pool, okay? Then you push up and down just a little bit as you move along, okay? You see how that is? So, so you're kind of going up and down, up and down, but you're not moving so fast that uh, it looks disconnected like this. It ends up, the pool is moved along. You could also do it by doing like gentle circles. That's another way that you can do it. So like that, see how that works? That's the goal. So kind of pick which way you want to do it. Do you want to do small circles and push the pool along? Or do you want to kind of go up and down and kind of push the pool along? They both work equally well. You just got to figure out how to do both of them. But that's the movement. The next step after learning how to weld on the metal plates is find you some thick walled tubing. So you see how this tubing on this fuel tank is really thick walled? You're gonna have a hard time blowing through it when you weld. Versus a bicycle frame is very thin, you'll end up blowing through it a lot. This will give you a lot of practice. You can weld on it, you can grind it out. You'll be able to mess with it enough that you'll do a good job. So we're gonna jump into prepping the metal. It's got paint on it and everything. Let's go over to the sanding bench and I'll show you what to do. So there's two things that we want to accomplish. We wanna take this layer of paint off and we wanna bevel the edge of the steel so that we can lay a bead of weld in there. The first tool I'm gonna to use is the disc sander because I can rotate and get that beveled edge really nicely on there, even with the fuel tank. Now remember, no fuel was in this, okay? It's perfectly brand new, no fuel has ever been in it. If you had fuel in yours and you're modifying it, dump all the fuel out and then rinse it out with water until it's as clean as you can get it, then you'll be okay. So you can see that there's like a nice 45 degree beveled edge on there, nice and clean. I'm gonna do the same to the other side. So I'm gonna use the wire brush to get all the paint coating off of it. You see that nice beveled edge? When you mate the two together, See how you got that awesome groove? You can weld right in there, be smooth as butter. So I'm gonna start by tack welding my piece in place. Now what that means is we're just gonna do a couple of zaps of welding 
to get it to stay where we want it to stay. Now we'll do the next. So it's okay in this case, but you can see that we went through it right there because it was really thin and I had a little hot. Let's talk about why tacking your work is so, so important. You're dealing with a lot of heat here and what will happen is, is you have these opposing forces. If I only tacked it in one place and then started to lay a bead on it, when it cools, it's gonna go right? So you have to think of those opposing forces. So if I'm welding, if I'm tacking here and I tack here, right? Then I could go around and I could start welding on this side because it's gonna cool and it's gonna wanna pull against these two tacks. But if I just, if I don't have a tack here, you can see how I don't have one on this back side, but I do here and here, let's say I just start welding here, you know what's gonna happen? It's gonna open up and go right there. So I have to tack that side too. So you're dealing with opposing forces. So that's the mindset you need to keep the entire time is like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna weld this tubing or whatever. I want it to stay perfectly straight. What do I do to keep it straight? I tack it on all sides. And then I make sure the opposing side that I'm welding on, there's a tack on the other side of it. We're gonna lower the heat a little bit cause I blew through those pretty easy. And then we'll start welding and we're gonna adjust as we go. So my tacks are on the opposing side and I'm gonna weld a bead right on the top here. Here we go. That's our first pass of our weld. You can see how we have a hole there and we have a hole there, but the rest of it's pretty smooth. I was able to lay a pretty good bead. Now, uh, this kind of flux core wire, not gonna be as smooth as wire and like an argon gas combination, okay? You're not gonna get as smooth because that kind of that flux gets in there and kind of messes it up a little bit. So one pass is good. Then we can go in, we can sand it down and then we can do another pass over it um, but first what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and fill those holes a little bit. I'll show you how to do that. So the trick in filling a pinhole is to not hang on your trigger too long. Like this. So what you did is you laid in there like three or four different layers every time you did that. So it'll be completely full. Doesn't look the best on top, so you have to sand it down or grind it down, but it's a solid weld. Let's do the next one. So what we use is the belt sander to sand down our welds. See how we got kind of a good bump there from filling that one? We'll get it all smoothed out. All right, so what's great about doing one good pass like that and then grinding it down is you can see how level your weld is. It's shiny here, shiny, shiny, not shiny. It needs to be ground a little bit, uh, but you could go over that again and then grind it down again and you'll end up getting it pretty smooth.
All right, let's talk about what I did so you can see the method to the madness here. So I did shorter side to side strokes there than I did here where I did longer. See how I filled most of that in? That's a technique that you can use for the whole thing. Like I just tested it here. And so my second pass, go over with longer ones like that and then boom, it'll be pretty smooth. So I hope that gave you enough of a jump start to start welding your own projects. Now, get you a good welder at a local uh, farm kind of store. That way, all of the things that you'll need will be there for you. Yeah, you could stock up on some stuff. Of course, have tips, have cones, have wire, stuff like that. Uh, but if you have a welder that you bought locally, then all of that stuff is gonna be there and you don't have to wait for the delivery truck. Then the next thing I recommend is getting you a good welding helmet, just the auto ones. They work really well. They're not crazy expensive anymore like they used to be. Um, but your first welding project, get a plate like this, a couple plates that are about equivalent size to what, you know, thickness of what most bicycle, uh, you know, tubing is. And then you'll start to learn how to, how to really nuance it or whatever, right? That way um, you won't blow through it so easily. So practice, practice, practice on this. Get your heats, you know, get your heat levels and your wire speeds dialed in. Learn what it's like when it goes too fast, when it goes too slow, too much heat, too little heat. Like really play around with it. Uh, for projects like this then, you could see where I ended up doing that wide, um, you know, the wide fill versus the narrow on my second pass. So if I go around this whole thing and do a wide fill, I'll be able to sand it off really smooth and make it exactly what I want it to be. So jump in the Facebook group with your project. If you're welding something and you're not sure what to do, shoot a video of it, post it in there, we'll help you. We're all learning, like we're all doing this together, right? <laughs> well, all learning, we'll all help each other. Take care, weld on. <sighs> Wanna win this bike? Well, you can, we're gonna announce the winner July 1st. We're not going to do a live because of some technical difficulties, but we're going to draw a winner and we're going to post a video July 1st announcing the winner of this bike. There's a link below. You can put your name in and we're going to go back through the list and all the videos where people put hashtag build it right, hashtag build it custom. So get your name on the list. Link below. We'll see you July 1st. Announce the winner of this bike.